All right, we're back, we're live. I'm Jay Fidel, this is Think Tech, here on a given Wednesday afternoon. Wednesday is always special because it's Hawaii, the state of clean energy. And Mitch Ewan and I, we, we do this thing about energy and we really like doing it. It's a sort of a, it's an important part of our week. Okay, hi Mitch. Aloha Jay from Kaneohe Bay. All right, there it is. Okay, and we have, uh, we have Shannon Tenganon from Hawaiian Electric. Hi Shannon. Hi Jay. We're going to talk about uh, your new policy on termination of delinquent accounts. I want to hear about that. Uh, okay, and we have Veronica Roca, and uh, she was with DBIT, but she has her own company now. What's the name of it? Hi, everybody. My name is Veronica Rocha, and the name of my company is Essential Leap. All right, Essential Leap. There you go. We're going to talk about we're going to talk about the economy, which is very important, and uh, it may be it may be a leap, and it may be essential. You're in the right place on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, let, let's begin with uh, Hawaiian Electric, though, Shannon. Um, so uh, a couple of weeks ago, we heard from you that uh, Hawaiian Electric was going to extend um, uh, situations where customers had not or could not pay bills, and you weren't going to terminate so quick, and you're going to give them extra time. Um, and I'm not sure when that ran out, but now the news is that you've extended that. Can you talk about it? Yeah, we've extended our moratorium on service disconnections um, through June 30. The previous deadline was um, March 7, I'm sorry, May 17th. Sorry about that. Um, so we want to work with our customers, urging them to call, not call in and or, you know, go online and try to um, put in a, a payment arrangement plan, um, a request for a payment arrangement so that they can start the process and we can work with them to help them through this time. I, I know many of our customers are having financial difficulties because of the pandemic. So we wanna be able to assure them that their electricity service will continue through June 30. And in the meantime, please give us a call, You know, contact us online, let us know that how we can get you through this time. Yeah, that's always that's always better because you, you build points with, uh, you know, whoever your supplier is when you tell them straight how you're doing and, and if you can't pay, why you can't pay and all that. So Definitely. that's good business, on, good business on both sides. And it's certainly good business for uh, Hawaiian Electric because, you know, these are times in which a lot of people are under financial stress for sure. Um, and it's very, uh, I, I guess I would use the word kind. It's business-like, but it's, it's also kind for you to do that. Here's a corporation with a heart. Oh, wow. <laughs> a corporation with a heart. <laughs> well, we definitely want to work with our customers. Um, and we totally understand that, you know, so many of them are having difficulties paying their bills. And for us, we just want to work with them. And we understand that it, it's going to be a difficult road. And so if they can contact us and just let us know what's going on, let us know how we can help you through, you know, what options work for you, what kind of time frame works for you, you know, to get that done. You know, we'll mm -hmm. definitely look at all the options on the table and, and see what we can do. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you know, uh, one thing that comes to mind is this, this has got to be costing you money because, you know, you're, you're continuing to generate the electricity, continuing to pay your expenses. And you're letting all these people off the hook. I mean, for good reason and everything, but you, yeah. you are letting them off the hook. You're, take, you're taking the brunt, you know, of the, of the financial stress. Um, how does the company feel about that? I mean, you can't, you can't afford to do this indefinitely, huh? No, we can't. <laughs> but, you know, we'll try to work, you know, as long as we can, you know, with our customers to help them along. Um, it does, definitely makes us nervous. We, I mean, you know, that's, you know, I think as a business, we try as hard as we can to work with our customers as long as we can, you know, to get through this together. I think it's a special Hawaii thing. Maybe it's that the same thing in Hawaii, which which gives us uh, such a flat curve, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, it's that it's, it's aloha is what it is. And not only are you offering them aloha, but you're expecting aloha from them. You're you're asking them to, you know, to be fair with you. And if they don't really have to, have to have a moratorium they should pay the bill you know some companies are okay uh you know they're they're not in uh, essential industries and, and they're having cash flow uh, i wouldn't expect those guys uh, should be calling you and asking you for 
for relief. Uh, and, and I think part of the Aloha exchange here is that you're fair with them and they're fair with you too. They gotta be fair yeah. with you. That's the Hawaii yeah. thing, you know, it's important. Mitch, what do you got on this? I haven't had one power interruption and I make sure my landlord pays the bill so that I don't. And uh, <laughs> so life is pretty good. I mean, I'm, I don't have any uh, real disruption. I, I just miss the, uh, the talking in the, the, you know, the hallways with my colleagues where all our best ideas come up is not parked in front of the computer, but talking to people. So uh, I think you're doing a great service to keep us going there, Shannon, uh, the electric company. Thank and you. keeping us, us guys who are working from home, uh, keep us going. So it's great. So thank, thank you. Yeah, really let me, appreciate let, it. Let me add one thing to that, you know, and we talked about this before. Here in the shutdown, you know, so many people are home. If they're not home all the day, they're home at night anyway. And, um, you know, what do they do at home? Well, they're on the internet, of course. Uh, they get a lot, of, a lot of nutrition out of the internet, a lot of information. Um, and they're on television. And, and in, fa in fact, you know, the, the cable services and uh, the, the movie services have, uh, have offered all kinds of free things. And uh, yeah. there are all kinds of first-run movies now. In fact, yeah. you know, the, the movie, what do they call it, the Oscars, are, are going to include first-run movies that were never aired in theaters at all, only on television. So what I'm saying is a lot of people are living by watching television. And, and that means, that means they gotta have electricity in their homes. We would sure. all be going nuts if we didn't have electricity in our homes. So I, I think it's every day we should be appreciative to Hawaiian Electric, uh, that it makes this possible because a community at home would like fall apart uh, if we didn't have electrical power at home. So well, also, you. yeah. It also allows us to pay our bills, like we can pay our credit card bills and we can pay our power bill <laughs> yeah. online. If I didn't yeah. have a computer, I mean, what, how do I going to pay my bill? I'm not allowed there to drive go. on the road or whatever. Yeah, now so, we fully you know. understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, what message do you want to leave with people, Shannon? Uh, let them um, remember this message, whatever. We just really want our customers to know that we're here for them. Um, we're definitely moving forward with them and we want to work with them, you know, to get them through this, this difficult time. And so uh, I just want to also say that our walk-in payment offices are also going to be closed, remain closed through June 30 as well. So I just want to let people know um, there are a million different ways, <laughs> you know, to pay your bill. And also if you get any kind of threat of disconnection through before June 30, please, please do not pay because it's a scam. Yeah, so, plenty, yeah. plenty of that, plenty of that. Yeah. Okay, uh, so Shannon, I wanna tell you at the right-hand side of your screen, this is in lieu of taking a break. If you run your mouse at the right-hand bottom of your screen, you will see, leave the meeting. You okay, I will leave so the we, meeting. We wanna say farewell and aloha, and then you, you can click us off. Thank okay, you, thank you so much. Take care. Awesome. Take care, <laughs> see you soon. <laughs> It worked. Yes, it worked. <laughs> okay, we're doing fine on Zoom. Okay, Veronica, uh, at last, uh, we're, we're alone with you. <laughs> Hi, how are you? you? It's been a You're while. Right. Yeah, indeed, I remember it like, very clearly. It seems like only yesterday. So, um, you know, we're talking about the economy here. Everybody's talking about the economy. Um, and I actually, I'm a little disturbed about that because what we should be talking about is how to get ready to reopen the economy. We are not ready to do that yet. Um, but, you know, one thing and another, and people are all focused on the economy now. And I, um, you know, there's a big question in my mind about that. So, but, you know, it's hard to knit an economy back together again. You know, economies are a combination of um, deals and exchanges um, a combination, combination of goods and services and transactions, millions of transactions. And when they stop, it, they don't necessarily come back by themselves. When they stop and you want to restart them, you have to, you have to look at the thing very carefully and figure out what to start first and how to start it so that you don't wind up putting somebody on the block. You could start a business up but there'd be nobody to do business with that business. And then that business fails. Even if the business didn't fail in the first place, when you start them up too early or not in, a, in the right sequence, you'll fail. Um, so I guess we, we should talk about that with you. Can you talk to us about that? 
Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on your show. Um, I've always enjoyed our conversations and was very pleased when Mitch asked me to uh, participate today. So thank you so much. Um, so this concept of restarting the economy and how do we do it in a way that is most efficacious and that is going to be serving us not only in the short term, but also in the long term is one that I've been thinking about more in the context of sustainability, clean energy, how do we reduce uh, climate emissions, um, that be one significant pathway, but then also in the climate adaptation or resiliency side of things. So that's why um, I don't know if you, you saw, but um, I put out a, uh, a newsletter, uh, this was last week, uh, laying out 10 strategies uh, to help revitalize Hawaii's economy in a way that is going to be cleaner and more prosperous. Wow, wow, and here we have you now. This is gonna be good. So um, uh, do you wanna start with number one or number six? It's really up to you. Um, <laughs> tell me where you'd like to start. Start where you wanna start, Veronica, okay? The, one, the ones that appeal to you and see if we can get through them all. Yeah, well, you know, uh, they all appeal to me because I put all of them out there. Uh, but prior to jumping on this call, uh, Mitch and I had a really good um, you know, initial discussion. And one of the, the questions that he uh, posed to me, which frankly, I think it's an excellent question, and I'm not, uh, I haven't given it all the, the thought that it merits. But the question was, um, so all of these strategies that you put forth are great, right? But what about the implementation of them? And so I was like, Mitch, that, you know, that's an excellent question. So uh, going back to what you asked about where, where to start, you know, maybe one way to think about it is what are the things that can be implemented in the short term that are going to have the least financial consequences, but the most uh, bang for their buck per se, right? So number one, um, I wrote expediting permitting, interconnection and regulatory approvals of distributed and utility scale clean energy um, infrastructure projects. And so I was very pleased to, to hear that this is one of the areas where various uh, stakeholders are already looking at and they were looking at it, I would say, even before COVID-19, but now um, after this COVID-19 or once it, um, we're in the middle of it and once it ends, I think people want to do things more um, effectively, faster, more efficient, and not necessarily resort to the old ways. So I understand folks have already started to look at this in greater detail. So that would be an action that I would put in that area of um, you know, low uh, fiscal consequence with potentially a very high upside. Um, there are other things that I think are going to take a bit longer for them to come to fruition and could have and will have. Well, let's dwell on that for a minute, though. That's that's sure. like a pretty good idea. That's an idea for all seasons, all businesses. Hawaii is, is famous um, for being stuck in the mud on uh, slow, <laughs> slow processing of permit applications. Sometimes it takes years, decades, even with big projects. Um, to get the, the permits. And sometimes, as we know from TMT, the permits don't stick. You thought you had a permit and maybe you didn't have a permit. Um, and I, mean, I, think the, I think the PUC is very sensitive to that. Uh, Jennifer, uh, the, the, what's the commissioner's name? Um, Potter, Jennifer Potter. Potter. Jennifer Potter is coming on the show next week. Oh, and uh, she, she, at the legislative briefing in the middle of January, she said that uh, they were, they fully intended to speed up um, the processing of, of permitting at the PUC, so that's all good. So I think you're going to get your wish on that one. Uh, we'll see. We'll see to what degree, and we'll you know we'll, we'll see how it actually affects things. But I think it's a great idea, uh, Mitch. So one one of the things we discussed was uh, for the permitting in particular, because it can take up to two years to get a permit, is uh, is look at third parties to help take up the what I call grunt work, like the detailed. Um, evaluation of designs and does it meet the codes and standards so that the, uh, the, the permitting people in the, in the actual office that sign off on the permits, they get a brief from the third party to say, 
it meets all your requirements. They can have a quick look to make sure, you know, like a quality analysis, then they stamp it. A, an example is my hydrogen system uh, on the big island. Like all, all the uh, equipment was pre-qualified by uh, like a ULS service and it had stickers on it saying this met all the, uh, you know, the uh, codes and standard requirements. So as soon as the permitting people saw the stickers and knew that it had been done, it was okay. They, you know, they signed off on it. They didn't have to go in and redo all that work. And I think if we kind of apply kind of third party, I mean, th these would be experts like engineers, uh, designers and code of, you know, safety people, and, and they do a professional job and, and, and the, the permitting people in, the, in, the, in the, uh, the department have to have confidence that it's being done properly. I mean, it's not just, you know, uh, uh, a half, uh, half measure just to get it through. It has to be, they have to meet all the requirements, but it takes the, that huge workload off the, our undermanned and uh, under-resourced permitting departments so that they can move this stuff quickly through the bureaucracy. And that's just one of the things that we talked about. That's like an essential leap. Yeah, a, a great leap. Leap, he an said, he used the word leap. leap. Essential leap, thank you. Yes. All right. Well, okay, that should only come true soon in all respects. Okay, what's your next point, Veronica? Well, the, um, I think that there's essentially two stages that we need to grapple with, as I was mentioning. The longer, the shorter term things, um, right now we're dealing with a massive state deficit that we will need to grapple with. So um, again, emphasizing that in the near term, doing as many of these like low or no fiscal impact solutions is I, I think appropriate. Um, as we get out of the situation and where there may be opportunities for the state to start investing or reinvesting again, I would say that it's so important that we continue to remain rooted in key and extremely laudable clean energy and climate policies like you know the alignment of the Paris Accord 100% renewable energy and various other um, you know st statutory um, uh, frameworks that have been in place so I, I think that in the longer term there is an opportunity to expand on uh, incentives um, that could also be beneficial so so um, one of the things that I talk about in uh, my, my list of, you know, 10 things is um, amendments to the renewable energy income tax credit. I, you know, I, I don't, I think that how hard our solar uh, industry, uh, for example, has been hit by COVID-19 and uh, job losses, et cetera, I don't think it's the right time to really look at tapering down the that tax credit. I think in the future, we ought to be looking at potentially expanding it to include other types of renewable energy technologies, as well as looking at the structure of it. Right now, we're looking at a uh, our law provides for a tax credit. In the future, could it provide for uh, a direct uh, refund? Um, at currently, um, the uh, equity markets are drying up. This is something that we're seeing not only in Hawaii, but also globally. And at least at the federal level, there are conversations of trying to make uh, that change for the uh, clean energy tax credits at the federal level. So mm. that's one um, idea. And of course I have others, but happy to pause. Well, well, but let's, let's break, let's break that into two parts. You know, the low hanging fruit part, the non, you know, the non, uh, the non fiscal part where you don't have to spend any money and the other part where you have to spend money. <laughs> I think the non fiscal part is really um, you know, interesting because, well, because you don't have to spend any money. <clears throat> but also it's a state of mind, you know, just like your first point about, um, you know, uh, uh, working on permits more quickly, uh, the non-fiscal things uh, in the state legislature, that's also a state of mind. And it's a matter of saying, hey, you know, our business just took a terrible hit. We have got to be business friendly, may I say, um, because the state, the state has not been, you can quote me on this, you can all quote me on this. Uh, the state has not been business friendly. We got to get to be business friendly. 
We've got to resurrect our economy. You know, the loss that we are taking now is not, it's not, it's not re reversible. It's lost. Um, for example, and this goes to the second part of, of your, um, you know, state legislature approach, um, is that the state legislature is in deep kimchi. Um, it, it was not have it's not enough money before, and it's certainly going to be not enough money now. So when you talk about tax credits, you talk about incentives that cost money. Um, you're talking about a you know a dry hole here, um, and you know query what are they going to do? They're not going to get a lot of tax revenues for this period of time of our economic history. They're not going to have any money. They had money before, but they spent it maybe in the wrong places. Uh, instead of incentivizing the economy, they were off and yawn. Um, but now they won't have any money to start with. So how are we going to achieve that in a dry hole? Um, this is a hard one. Have you got any ideas about that? I can't say that I do. I mean, it's a really challenging situation with a lot of moving parts. I mean, I, I think how deep that hole goes uh, will depend on many things that we're yet to see. They're going to depend on uh, how much, if at all, uh, subsidies uh, or subsidization, I should say, incentives, etc., we get from the federal government. Um, how quickly tourism comes back, how quickly uh, other types of businesses in Hawaii are able to bounce back. But yeah, we are going to be more than likely dealing with a very challenging fiscal situation uh, for the foreseeable future. Yeah. So, uh, Mitch, are you are you ready to, uh, you know, triple your tax payment to the tax office and help them out? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> and that's a knee jerk reaction. But uh, I do have some uh, potential solutions. And we have a solution on the books, actually, the uh, transportation services contracting that Riley Sato uh, championed last year is now a law which allows the counties and the state now to, for example, for transportation, uh, to use private monies like a private public partnership where the private company gets a contract to supply, for example, 60 buses um, in one go, and they own them and they operate them, and all they do is they give the county a, um, a, a um, monthly bill for doing that. So it comes out of the operating expense rather than capital expense. So you're using private money. And uh, Riley has already got several uh, pension funds and people that really want to do it because what they get is a guaranteed return on investment for like 20 years of non you know uh, recurring revenue contracts and they love that kind of thing because it gives them stability in their funds mm -hmm. and that's we need to do that with a lot of things we're doing here is is looking at the private industry and uh, to fund these things that traditionally you know we we put in a budget to buy three or four buses one year and then the next year we don't have any money for any buses and we end up like the big island with, uh, you know, out of a fleet of 65 buses, they only have 10 buses that are operational, maybe more now, but th that's the point. And uh, if we'd gone down this other road, uh, we'd have a whole brand new fleet of zero emission buses, which meets a whole lot of our, you know, legis our, our policies that we want to implement here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So, and, and reduce costs. Mm -hmm. I mean, this could be the low cost option. Well, I'd like to trip off that for a minute. You know, so you talk about a central leap, Veronica. Um, you know, we have seen the state squander money on a regular basis, I'm sorry to say. Uh, no examples here right now, but there have been cases where the, the state spent lots of money when it shouldn't have spent that money. And so I think one of the elements to answer my own question here is, if you, if you, if you want to do a surgical tax credits for energy and otherwise, restart the economy, um, then don't throw the money away somewhere else. Be careful about how you spend the money. Make, make, only spend it on essential things because there are really critical things we have to do going forward. Your thoughts? My thoughts are, I, you know, I don't have a position on uh, government uses of funds, but I would like to echo what Mitch was talking about in terms of public-private partnerships. I feel that there's huge, massive opportunities there. Um, looking at another um, non-fiscal um, 
opportunity there is we'd be revisiting our state uh, county policies to make sure that they are effective in allowing for these type of, of P3 uh, uh, opportunities to arise. Um, aside from buses, I would say I think there's a huge opportunity to benchmark uh, all government facilities and do procurements that take advantage of private sector financing and not do it doing it in a silo, but doing it in a way that incorporates energy efficiency, right? Squeezing a, a that as much as possible. And then the rest, uh, supplementing the energy that you need through renewables and also incorporating technologies that are here today, but are gonna be here in the future, like electric vehicles, electric vehicles, Vehicle, you know, charging stations that can optimize charging, electric vehicle buses. I know Mitch is also a big fan of, of hydrogen, right? I feel those are the things that we ought to be looking at as we, um, you know, get out of this hole and, and also think about how to continue living in Hawaii in a way that is as clean, sustainable, um, and, and prosperous as it can be. Wow. Well, I know you had 10 things, Veronica, and I, by my math, uh, you, we covered two of them. <laughs> that leaves eight of them. And, and I hope Mitch will invite you back for another show or more uh, to cover the other eight, because I know they're going to be good too. Uh, but for now, I think, I, I hate to say this because it was really going good. Uh, I think we're out of time, Veronica. I'm sorry. Nice. Mitch, can you summarize what we've done today and, and put a cap on this for the show? Yeah, quickly summarize. I mean, uh, Veronica uh, with Essential Leap has come up with some really uh, thoughtful ideas on how we can restart our economy and at, at the same time advance our policies so that we just don't drop all our policies because of this current uh, fiasco that we're going through. Um, and, and maybe we can leverage some of the things. Maybe this is going to you know, the fact that we were in this extremist situation is getting everybody's attention about how we can be more efficient because we have to be. We can't afford to just sit back. So we'd really love to have uh, Veronica come back. She's got eight more points that we have to talk about. <laughs> and I've already asked her before the show started if she'd be willing uh, to take that essential leap <laughs> to join us on Think Tech Hawaii. So thank you so much, Veronica. You have some great points and we look forward to discussing the other eight with you uh, at, a, at our next show. Yeah, Veronica, where can we see all your points? Where can we look? Is it on a website somewhere? Yeah, let's let's bring that slide up. There you are. Let's leave it on so everybody can get it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, it's on my website under the blog. Thank okay. you so much for having me on your show. I appreciate it. Thank you, Veronica. Thank you, Mitch. Talk to you guys soon. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha.